Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Hard West. In the previous episode we finished the main campaign. Well, for the most part. Ugh. And in this episode we're going to be taking on a Scars of Freedom scenario. This is going to be challenging because we cannot activate gameplay mods, which means no express scarification. I am still going to take combat injuries, I'm going to stick to normal. And another thing is that, according to this guide, we do not have access to the Fate Trader and thus the powerful equipment. There are also certain mechanics within this game, or within this, that are going to be somewhat challenging, but following this guard. <laughs> Following this, uh, following this guide that I'm using, we should be able to overcome it. Stringfellow Quarry, Texas, the Civil War. What, no intro story? Kill all henchmen, do not kill Dr. Gorman. Gunther, Theodore, Dr. Aldous Gorman, Luis. Who oh boy, this is gonna be interesting. Alright, let's go for the repeater rifle. Good weapon to have. What all do we have on our side? Liberty and Phineas. Might as well have both of you go for Gunther. Or at least try to. Is that you, Liberty? Idiot staying out in the open like that. Try and finish off Gunther. Don't need that much damage. Hell, I'd take any damage at this point. Gunther, I hope this gives you the peace you deserve. see the other guy, huh? I'm oh, fine. I'm not gonna move over there because that's gonna cause a reaction shot, which I just think the radius of that is ridiculous. Right, Liberty, you get over here, see if you can't finish off, what was it, Gorman? No, Theodore. Or is oh, Alvin dear. and Simon? There goes Theodore. see him from there. No matter. Best you reload anyways. Could've used a golden bullet, but it wouldn't have been enough to kill her. I wouldn't have been able to get a clear shot at her with the ricochet. Well, may as well. Am 
on. Dang it. It is your only hope. Please stop shooting and let me explain. Your pay, you sick bastard. I never meant you harm. Quite the opposite, in fact. Do you remember the day you escaped? After the emancipation. You think I forget a day like that? Many would have seen it as a victory and waited for the fall of the Confederacy. But you took matters into your own hand. I saw what you did. You were magnificent. Fred Glass Liberty and who's this last guy? Patty Somerset. Okay then. Hmm. Well, you've got a shotgun. So let's move you over here to take out this guy. Then, Liberty, let's move you over here and hopefully take out this other guy. Seems there's a fair number of people here. The enemy turn is taking this long. Freedom was just beyond the quarry gate. But how to get it open? I had guns stashed around the camp, and I had a friend in the brig. I'd been planning. Ooh, I could send this guy over this way. That would leave him alone. But I need to get those guns. There's nowhere I can really move Liberty without leaving her out of cover, so I'll just move her around this way. Okay then, Liberty. Hmm, I wonder, could I ricochet off of this to hit him? It's only a 39% chance. So I don't think I'll take it. Instead, I think I'll move her around to grab one of these guns. Bingo. How you smuggled those weapons in is still a riddle to me. You can do a lot of things when you're desperate enough. Okay, Fred, let's get you over here. Ah, I knew it. And then, Liberty. Fortunately, I got no idea if that guy's still there. No matter, let's get our friend out first. You risked your own freedom to save that poor devil from the brig. Your courage was incredible. I only saved him because I needed an extra pair of hands. Call it what you will, I still found it marvelous. Okay, unfortunately old Patty can't get over there to take care of that guy in one movement. Half red. Ugh. God, the size of these reaction shot areas are ridiculous. It's not going to be able to kill him in one go. Alright, that got him a navy gun. Good. That'll give him some range. Alright, Liberty, you get up there. And we'll at least force that guy to move. Ah, Fred. Hmm. We don't have to kill everyone in here, we just have to get out of here. So I say we just keep moving. Let's see. There's only one way in there, and that's through that door. Well, so be it. Did 
Gotta get Patty up there so we can get himself a another weapon besides that shotgun. I know there's somebody upstairs, so I'm not gonna send Patty up there. Fred. Let's get you moving. Ooh, I saw that guy over there. So let's get you over here. Let's get you up here into a fairly decent cover corner. Yep. Knew it. I can't use that as cover. I say we just use Ricochet next turn to get that guy. Okay, Patty, you go get yourself a new gun. A musket. I suppose that's thematically appropriate. Ah, we don't have enough luck for that. Screw it, I'm going in. Oh! Well, that got that got me a new injury. I'll give you that much. Good God! Well, thank you, healing elixir. I suppose. Still, though, the fact that that's not a flanking shot is outright ridiculous. I can't move over there. No window there for Patty to shoot out of to in order to get that guy. Ugh, this game becomes so much more difficult with these uh, stupid reaction shots, which I don't even have access to. Ugh, can't get past him. Wouldn't mind it so much if my characters had reaction shots as well. Okay. There's that, but now she has access to me. But I have access to her as well. You know, it is both amazing and incredibly annoying just how difficult a game can become when you alter just one little factor. Uh, 
Alright, let's just get everybody moving up. Fast as we can. Jeez, oh, I'm gonna be stuck with that shredded hand for a while because no express scarification. Well, unless I choose to heal it. Could get up there in one action point. I think, I think I will, just to get rid of this guy. Yeah, I could have gone for the uh, story opportunity, but I have no idea how that would affect things. Somehow, you found a way to open the gate to your freedom. When I saw this, I knew you were the one I had been looking for. Alright, Fred, you get over here, make sure there's nobody around, and keep yourself in cover, and reload. Aha! I knew it! Really? Really? One lucky shot, that's it? Uh I'll be back, guys. Don't BS. Okay, we're back. I just used the trainer to get us back to here because I did not want to do that entire mission by hand. Again, because it sends you actually back to the very, very beginning where you're fighting against Dr. Gorman and his servants. Ugh. Sliding down that chute was certain death. But you still braved it. I'd rather die than be a slave a minute longer. It was apparent, my dear, and incredible. Okay, then. Though most people didn't know what it was or what it did, Ether turned the wheels of that region. Whether they knew it or not, everybody wanted it. I had to look away. Your fall was too painful to watch. Luckily, we reached you before the slavers. We took your broken body to my laboratory where you would be safe. Before I could improve you, I needed several body parts to replace the ones you lost in the fall and an ample supply of ether. I felt my comrades at the morgue might be of some assistance. Yeah, this is going to be a thing where, well... They're going to be affected by decay. Decay propensity. For unknown reasons, graphs deteriorate with time. There are graphs, and there are also going to be... Which basically affect the whole card system. And there are different combinations you can get to get different things. Ether is also needed to, you know, stop decay. Oh boy, Dr. Gorman's mute manservant, Phineas, has served as a test subject for many of his master's experimental treatments. This has not been without impact on Phineas's looks, sympathies, or psyche. Reticent to say the least, no one knows his true feelings about his employer. And Dr. Aldous Gorman. Dr. Gorman is an expert in medicine, human anatomy, and the revolutionary new field of transplantology. A pioneer, his research attracts disgust, fear, and envy, but his work is meticulous, re meticulously researched using the latest methods. Okay. First things first, we're gonna have to head for the morgue, because that's the only place we can go. The morgue was run by the Masked Doctors, a secret medical society that counted me among its membership. The morgue had facilities for keeping human body parts alive outside of the host body which enabled us to replace damaged body parts in humans and alleviate previously incurable ailments. I have viewed the latest merchandise, searching for something suitable for you. Havelock Venson and I had known each other for ages. He was the doctor's primary merchant, exchanging body parts for ether. Ether could be manufactured from various biological materials, but for human organs and surgeries, only ether from human material was acceptable. Anything else caused horrific disfiguration on the subject. 
business ran on ether, which made it a de facto currency. If one wanted body parts for their research, they paid in ether, not money. Let's see, stinger. A venomous stinger of arachnid origin grafted onto the human body. Ability? Crippler. Compatibility? No idea. I believe one of those is Epsilon. And that's Epsilon and Omega. Marshall's stomach. The job of a federal marshal requires an iron stomach. This one confers courage in any situation. Okay. Well, according to this, we're going to want to buy the Marshall's stomach. Which we're not paying for in cash, we're paying for in ether. Very well, then. That's the way things worked in the morgue. Ether for parts. To elevate you beyond human mass, I would need more of both. Much more. I needed to get going. Get to the point. Why did you do it? Why me? Patient. I will explain all. Oh, you will? Are you gonna have a real pretty hole where your face used to be? Okay, then. After that... Let's see, new vents, blah blah blah. First we're gonna head for Maple Falls. Maple Falls was the biggest settlement in the area and was pooled with decent folk for the most part. There was a gunsmith, a saloon, and there was always somebody who needed medical attention. Well, let's see, in this case, we're gonna wanna spend some time to get 75 cash. Though it took me a couple of hours, I made a $75 profit from home visits. Then... Lone Star... Da, 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 da. Oh wait, upon entering Maple Falls, a scrawny youngster approached me and began blithering about an accident in a nearby coal mine. He urged me to go there immediately. I agreed to go with him. The wounded miner was conscious, but had a large opening in the middle of his chest. I asked how it had happened. Apparently, the man had been stamping some explosives with a metal pole when the charge went off, sending the pole flying through his chest. I could clearly see his beating heart and the expanding motion of his right lung. The left one was almost completely destroyed. The wound bled profusely, and the man was short of breath. I told the men to leave me alone with him. Oh boy. Let's see. Choose the miner. Choose the. I thought. Tag the miner's lung, which will unlock the lucky lung graft at the morgue's stock. So, gave him an excessive dose of morphine to ease his pain, tagged his good lung for my friends at the morgue, and instructed the other miners to get the priest. The morphine worked quickly, and the man passed away without suffering. When the body arrived at the morgue, Venson would note the mark and extract the lung for me. Doesn't look all that lucky with all those holes in them, but whatever. Let's see. As you visit locations, characters with transplants, golems, will decay, accumulating negative stat modifiers. Observe the clock icons in the exploration panels to gauge how each action increases your partner's decay. Decay can be reset in the morgue at the expense of ether. So he's now got creeping decay. Which basically means he's going to be dealing with some stat debuffs. Negative 1 to max HP and minus 10 to max luck. And like I was saying, yeah. These are essentially going to be our cards. Now then. Okay. Completing this is going to award us nothing, so we're going to ignore it for now. Next, we're going on ahead for the lynch mob. I know as the crowd attracted my attention, I soon realized it was a lynch mob. They were bent on punishing a Chinaman whom they said had slept with a white woman. I had seen the poor devil in town, a first-class craftsman. He was good with his hands and a prodigy at finding useful trinkets others might dismiss as junk. And we are actually not going to help him. It would have been foolhardy to take on the whole crowd, so I watched patiently from a distance, from a safe distance. 
I hoped I would be able to salvage something from the corpse. The mob did their worst. There was hardly anything left after they finished with the poor man. His death was not in vain, however. I managed to salvage one of his hands. Yep, Hand of Fortune is now available at the morgue. Ooh, this is getting morbid. Then we're going to want to travel to the slaughterhouse, slaughterhouse and choose to sneakily slaughter the bull. I visited the local slaughterhouse. The bovine cardiovascular system is far more efficient than the humans. Naturally, I was interested in acquiring some of that power. The bull I wanted was too expensive to purchase, so I resolved to slaughter it when nobody was looking. Extracting the bull's heart proved a noisy affair. Inevitably, it attracted the attention of the stable boy. We managed to run from him with our prize intact, but he managed to wound Phineas with a bullet from his derringer. I got back on my way. He's got a spine fracture, but we got the bull's heart now available at the morgue. Lastly, we're going to want to go to the war hospital. I went to the war hospital, where wounded soldiers were being nursed back to health or to a state where they could be put in front of the house with a begging bowl. I posed as a local doctor. No one questioned my ruse. And then we're going to want to choose to look for body parts to unlock the sharpshooter's arm. I examined the patients, looking for body parts suitable for you. I found a myopic soldier who had once been a sharpshooter. I reasoned that his skill must lie in his arm, so I amputated one of them and had it sent to the morgue where my friends could prepare it for my use. As I was leaving, however, one of the nurses identified me as a stranger. She raised a clamor and called for the staff to apprehend me. Luckily for me, the response to the alarm was un quite uncoordinated. Thus, I was able to escape before facing the consequences of my actions. Where are you? I saw something else pop up. Oh, it's serious decay for Phidias. For Phineas. I always keep saying Phidias. Okay, now that we're done with that, now we need to get some extra gold, ether, and equipment. We're going to want to choose to head for the beauty clinic next. Ah, there it is. One of my fellow doctors, Dr. Stoneman, ran a beauty clinic in the nearby Hot Springs area. While he was not overly fond of me, many of his patients harbored the opposite sentiment. Case in point, the elderly Mrs. Harper saw me in the clinic and implored me to visit her home to resolve a problem of hers. I promised I would come. The clinic had an experimental cosmetic surgery ward. There, Dr. Stone restored syphilis victims' noses, removed gunshot scarring, and removed excess fat tissue from the obese. As fat is an extremely efficient source of ether, I was naturally quite interested. I thought I... You're gonna wanna... S I sought out Stoneman and offered him a generous sum for the fat. Stoneman was more than a little surprised and declined my offer most vehemently. He called me an epithet, as I am loath to repeat, and assured me my rampage would soon be over. Luckily, Dr. Duval, a longtime friend of mine and the leader of our secret society, noticed our spat and intervened. He spoke to us at length about professional camaraderie and sharing assets for the investment of medicine. In the end, Stoneman was forced back down. We concluded the trade, and I left the premises. That got us a fair amount of ether. Da, 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 da. We're going to want to head to Harper Ranch. I found Mrs. Harper most distraught. She told me quite convincingly that ever since her first son, Henry, had gone to war, her other children had been plotting to kill her. While she was resigned to passing away, she feared the prospect of being strangled, poisoned, or otherwise brutalized. She then asked me to help her end her life peacefully. She promised significant compensation. Okay. Oh, I thought those were bottled. No, that's actually the clock there. Okay, well then, let's euthanize her, I guess. I agreed to assist her in this most delicate matter. Mrs. Harper put on her finest clothes for the occasion and lay down on a couch. She motioned to me to proceed. I prepared to chloroform, uh, I prepared a chloroform mask for her and loaded with a dose so big it would put down a horse. She breathed its vapors until she placidly became insensate. After a brief brief interval, I checked her pulse and found she had passed away. Alas, her children did not appreciate my actions. When Mrs. Harper's younger son learned what had happened, he was furious. Apparently, Mrs. Harper had lost her wits in her old age and be had become paranoid. I had been duped by this madwoman, and now her son was challenging me to a duel. As a man of honor, I accepted. Phineas served as my second. 
We were to march ten steps, then turn around and fire. The Harpers had their own family guns, passed from generation to generation, for use in such momentous events as this. The day was sunny with a slight breeze. As the countdown started, I marched into the face of death. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Choose to be an honorable duelist. I waited until the countdown finished, then turned around and fired to the best of my ability. My shoulder burned. Harper's bullet had hit me. Though the pain was severe, I managed to keep my head about me long enough to terminate young Harper's life in response. With the help of Phineas, I made a retreat, being sure to collect my blood for later ether production. We left. Okay, then. From there... Well, we're actually out of time for this episode. So, I'm going to have to end it off here for today. If you guys like what you see, please leave a like, subscribe for future content, don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notifications for when I upload, or to hit the straw pulling to vote for our next Let's Play. And please, leave a comment down below this video. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching.